So here we are with Lex. We're going to do a first impressions feature of this AI word processing application, exploring some of the scary stuff within it, but also the useful stuff around how this could be beneficial to productivity. If you're new here, hit subscribe. And if you're lucky, you can be one of the first, I've only got four Lex invites. They will be in the description below. So if the fastest people will get to them, but please do make sure you subscribe to support the channel at the same time if you are not already. So here we are with Lex. Now this is a word processor, very simply it's Google Docs, has some of the real time abilities combined with AI to make a more personal writing experience that will save you time. Very interesting concept. I only know of really one other AI writer experience in the space and that's Jasper. And this is more for marketing copy um, I'll show a video on screen now, but basically what it does is you essentially tell you what it wants, like, for example, you go, I want you to write an article on this topic and it will write it for you, which is pretty crazy, or elements of it for you, social media copy, blog post, website, etc., and it will do that for you. And it uses what the saying 10% of the web, um, of the AI, um, the AI is taking 10% of the web research on this to create those articles for you in a expertly written piece. Very interesting pieces of technology at the moment. And it's going to be hard to distinguish what AI is writing and what it's not. So uh, who, whether humans are writing it. So it's, there's the only one I know at the moment, but Lex is more focused towards a, a personal management of your task and um, personal management of your writing. So you can see here that you can see the um, Google Docs type experience. You can do it in real time. So I've got two of these open. So I could start, um, you know, going down here and it'll follow it. It works in real time, much like Google Docs. But it has two AI abilities. One, which is a title generation tool, which I'll come to in a moment. And one that helps you to write the article if you get writer's blog or helps you to build it out on the topic. So for example, here, I'm taking this from my university dissertation. Um, I wrote about coffee shops and how coffee shop owners could implement coffee shop loyalty cards to improve the way that they essentially get better custom. Um, I'm wondering whether it can just do it all for me. So what you do is you press plus, 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 three times plus, and what it will do, I'm just gonna get rid of the other one, um, it will start writing the article for you. So I wrote, coffee shop owners suffer from trying to get people into their coffee shops. One of the most effective ways is that you can prove it with loyalty cards. And it said, with a coffee shop loyalty card, customers could, would have been improved. So this is interesting because it's more like filler, filler information. Um, it's helping to sort of kickstart your article and it's writing it in a fairly good way. I'm just gonna read the bottom bit to check. Coffee shop loyalty card owners would be beneficial for growth customers. Customers would be more likely to, so maybe not necessarily the beneficially academically because it's not gonna be taking things like reference and things like that. But for a blog post, if I was writing about this topic, it would be quite an easy way to do that, um, which is really freaky. So if I go to the top right hand corner, I'm now gonna generate the title ideas. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take this article and basically try and write a title for it. Um, so it's gonna say, okay, coffee shop, um, loyalty cards, a uh, generate a uh, good income. How coffee shop loyalty cards, this one's a good one, number six. I think there's a little bit of a bug here. Um, I think it's not allowing me to select it, um, but I could just copy and paste this. And now that's, ooh, that is my new title here. So quite an interesting feature, especially if you're writing an article and you want to make it more consumable for the web or easier to understand. Um, and it's basically written me an article. So I'm gonna try out a few more things. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new one and I'm gonna really put the AI to the test in terms of productivity apps and see what they generate for us. So we're gonna say best note-taking apps for researchers. Uh, and let's press plus, plus, plus. Let's see what happens. See what they give us. Um, so let's see. Okay, so it's given us a list of um, Android, iPhone, Evernote, Google Keep, OneNote, Bear, Simple Note, Notion, and Millinote. So, yeah, pretty simple. But it got it a little bit messy there. Um, so I might try that again, writing it a bit neater. I think if you write stuff a bit smarter, so if I create a list of 
five note-taking apps for beginners and then press plus plus. Let's see whether that improves the way that, there we go, a much more refined experience. And those note-taking applications, relatively decent in terms of their selection. Um, so that's pretty cool. The same you could do with, um, let's, let's really put it to the test here, um, uh, amazing YouTube channels focused on productivity software. Please be in the top, please be in the top five. <laughs> Let's see. No! Um, the Productivity Show, damn, and the Workflow Show. Um, let's just really, let's really push it more because I've got to be in the top five, right? <laughs> this, this channel has got to be in the top five. No! There we go. Max Sparky got the top um, spot. But you can see what I'm talking about here is the technology is interesting because it, it, it can not only... Um, help to sort of do that, um, but it will sort of, sort of build on, on, on that conversation. So if I was writing a, a topic about, say, um, Egypt, um, let's say I was like, okay, um, I was do, doing this the other night, um, where is the Valley of Kings? And I could be like, okay, there we go. Ooh, actually, it was a very small condensed version of that. Um, but you could be like, how can I get to the Valley of Kings from UK? Wow, okay, so see, th this is really interesting because let's say I was trying to write an FAQ. I've partially written my FAQ or my blog about this just by pressing a few things. And that's really interesting. I'm not saying you could type in all of the stuff you wanted to reply back to your boss and it to produce a wonderful version of it. But actually, um, as a collective, it's not bad. Um, so I'm gonna say, uh, what is the currency in uh, Egypt? Egypt, Egypt. And how does it convert, what is the conversion rate? Right now. Oh, I think I did it. There we go, wow, it's okay. So now you're starting to get really interesting bits of information because say I was writing an article and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to go over to the web, find the research, find all the details, bring it back, come back here. You don't have to do that with something like this. It's quite an interesting step. So, sorry, I got sort of carried away there. A little bit of the background of this company is that it's run by um, Nathan Bash, Bash, I'm sorry for the mispronunciation. He's the co-founder of Every. Now, Every is a company that, um, they, they do newsletters about business, productivity, and personal development. Uh, they have Tiago Forte on there, they have Dan Shipper, but they make these small tools, a little bit like us, but much more refined. <laughs> um, and it's very interesting to see this content company start making their own tools. So it's very, very interesting. Nat El Eliasson has also started to check it out as well. Um, and a lot of people are seeing whether this can be um, something they use in the future. I did see Tiago use it um, for something like, so for example, um, you could say something like, um, article let's say i was like okay uh, write a compelling article um about productivity tools or with say blog post about productivity tools being used in colleges uh maybe being used in um, HR, and then plus, plus, plus. Let's see what they come up with with this. I'm guessing it won't be hideously long. Okay. So again, I don't think it can be, it, can, it doesn't expand much longer. I've seen more long articles being produced by, but instantaneously there is, um, th there's sort of like a, here are four productivity tools to, but it didn't seem to fully actually produce the, the outline. I don't know whether that was an error, but quite interesting to say the least. 
Now you can ask the AI questions. I didn't know that was a feature, but interesting to see how this technology works. So let's see how this, I'm really interested in this sort of AI writer technology at the moment. Maybe I'll try another one, see whether it's suitable for you, but this is my sort of first proper take on a AI writer. So it'd be interesting to see how this expands in the future. Don't see people using it to fully get there, <laughs> uh, to fully outline their university reports, um, but at the same time, it's gonna be an interesting space for sure. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here to keep productive, please do make sure to subscribe. We've got a new newsletter called The Report and The Routine. You can check them out below. It'd be amazing to have you over there. I look forward to diving into a few more videos like this very soon. Thank you very much, folks, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.